Multiple people recommended I try out the Chaos Blade for a run like I did with my Painting Guardian Sword and Demon Great Axe runs. I put it up to a vote in my community tab what order I'd do a group of runs in, and the Chaos Blade run first by quite a bit. Tori Kusuda, another trans girl challenge runner, recommended I try using the Chaos Blade at minimum stats, since it damages you every time you land a hit. I figured, since it only takes about 20 health, that wouldn't be very interesting, but she disagreed and decided to try it out on her channel. It turns out it was, in fact, quite interesting, so I reached out to her and we decided to release our videos on the same day. It's also her 100 subscriber special, so if you feel so inclined and enjoy a good Dark Souls challenge run, you should subscribe to her. Me too, obviously, but I feel like that goes without saying. Anyway, I'm using the Chaos Blade because I heard it was a good weapon, so I'm interested in seeing how well it performs under normal circumstances. I'll be using glitches to get the weapon as soon as possible, the only bosses I'll be fighting on my way to get it will be the Asylum Demon, Quailag, and the Iron Golem, so no need to worry about not getting the weapon as soon as possible. I'm starting off as the Thief for the High Dexterity, grabbing the Black Firebomb so I can obliterate the Asylum Demon and speeding through the Asylum. The first order of business is grabbing the Uchi Katana, since it's the easiest of the three katanas to get. All we have to do is sprint straight to the Undead Merchant, throw some of our leftover Black Firebombs at him, and take the weapon. Unfortunately, the Uchi requires 14 strength, so I'll be two-handing it for a while, but aside from that small issue, the weapon is pretty decent. It's not incredibly fast for a dex weapon, but it's not horribly slow either, and the moveset is pretty fun. Anyway, we need to get the Uchi Katana to plus 10 before we can actually turn it into the Chaos Blade, so we use some ladder shenanigans to climb over a wall, fall through the floor, sprint over top of the depths until we can get back inbounds, run up through the depths, and grab the Ember. I did free learn Chaos, but I figured Power Within might not be the best play, considering the weapon hurts already. Anyway, we carefully kill some dogs and butchers with a very low-level weapon, open the death shortcut for later, and warp back out with a homeward bone. If you decided to rest at the depths bonfire, the only way out is by killing the gaping dragon, so maybe don't do that. I did a couple silly things because I forgot that we don't need titanite chunks for this run. I killed a black knight in the burg, which I probably would have done anyway, but I also drained new Londo so I could grab the very large ember. Obviously I would have had to drain it later anyway, but definitely not this early. I did grab the composite bow and try to use that to kill Ingward, but I ended up running out of the 16 large arrows before killing him, so I had to climb the ghost slider anyway. I quit out at the bottom because it makes getting up that little bit more consistent, so he had full health when I got up there, but I was able to hit him with a couple black firebombs, and he's not particularly strong anyway, even without the firebombs. He's really bad at hitting you, so it wouldn't have been a super hard fight anyway. In other words, don't use spells in PvP. It probably won't work well for you. Anyway, sprinting to the Ember is easy, so there's not much more to say here other than the fact that I recognized my error and felt very silly for a moment. I want to collect as many large Titanite shards as I can before entering Sens, and preferably without grinding. I go ahead and kill the Crystal Lizard in the barrel outside the Taurus Demons Arena, then run down past Havel, kill the Lizard in the Basin for a couple more shards, and then run to Andre. Four large shards isn't much, but it easily gets us to plus eight, which is more than enough for Quelag. And there are two more shards on the way down to her. Plus, the 6 and cents is more than enough to reach plus 10 by the time we reach the giant blacksmith. I didn't have enough souls to upgrade to even plus 1, let alone buy the titanite shards I need in the first place, so I went and killed the big guy to get a free shard, upgraded to plus 1, and attempted the titanite demon for some extra souls. We need to get the demon titanite for the chaos blade anyway, so this works out. Unfortunately, the titanite demon has some weird attacks, crazy wide sweeps, a painful tail, and a confusing jump attack, so I wasn't able to take it out with such low damage. That's not necessarily detrimental, I can just go grind some souls from the Hollows and Balder Knights, which I would have needed to do anyway. So a bit of grinding later, I get the Uchi Katana to plus 8, which is higher than I usually have for Quelag, kill a Titanite Demon for the souls and Demon Titanite, and head down through Blighttown. The Uchi doesn't do an insane amount of damage, and the two-handed moveset takes a good chunk of stamina, especially this early on, but it's also Quelag. She was one of the tougher fights for me in my first playthrough, but these days I only get hit because of greed, hubris, or inattention, sometimes all three at once. I'm very excited to get the Chaos played so I have a half-decent damage output. I've used the Uchi through the whole game and didn't understand why people like dex builds, but after a couple other weapons, namely the Scythe and Painting Guardian Sword, I get it a lot more now. I used the souls I got from Quelag to get my dexterity to 26, and used some more shenaniganery to enter Sens before fighting the Bell Gargoyles. I somehow did Sens skip first try, it usually takes me at least a few attempts, but I guess I was doing it so often that it's getting easier to do consistently. Anyway, we run through Sens, grabbing a few pieces of large titanite for later, and take on the Iron Golem with a slashing weapon. I'm sure this won't end terribly. Shockingly, it goes pretty well, aside from him grabbing me from another zip code, but to be fair, that one is kind of on me, I probably should have been able to dodge that attack by now. Despite the low damage, I was even able to get him to tumble. It took a while, but he also stays wobbly for a lot longer than I remembered, so it's not really an issue. There's nothing to say about Anorlando that hasn't already been said, other than the fact that I was grabbing Demon Titanite in this run. 
There's one in the chest behind the first set of two giants, one behind the tower the first elevator is in, on the same level you climb onto the buttress from, then there's two more in the chest guarded by the three silver knights you need to kill for Siegmeier's quest. There's also the titanite demon that drops two titanite, but it's in a tiny room and is probably the most annoying titanite demon in the game, so I'd rather avoid it if possible. Anyway, we run to the giant blacksmith, get the Uchida plus 10, and ascend it into the chaos blade using Quelag's soul. I didn't realize that the Chaos Blade needs 16 strength, so I'm a couple levels short of that, but luckily we're low enough level that two levels isn't very hard to get. I use all the humanity I had to get to 8, but the sword gets more damage up to 10 soft humanity, so I'll be getting that as soon as I can too. I was able to get the sword to plus 3 using the Demon Titanite I've picked up so far, and we can finally go face ONS to see what our damage is like. It's not like crazy good, but it's definitely not bad damage, even with the 20 damage I hit. The weapon is fast too, meaning both that the health penalty is more significant, but also that we can deal more damage. I was even able to get Super Smo to bleed a couple times and he died super fast, so I'm definitely not disappointed with the weapon. The souls from ONS ended up being more than enough to reach 40 dexterity, so I'll probably only be leveling health from now on. I was expecting Lotrek to be in Firelink because I already killed Quelag, but apparently he doesn't move until specifically killing the gargoyles, so I head up to his cell to kill him and get the Fap Ring, since any extra health is nice to have, on top of the stamina. I mentioned that the Ring of Favor and Protection isn't a great ring, all things considered, and I did get a bit of pushback on it, primarily because it's used so often, but the only reason it's used so much is how easy it is to get. It's really only super useful for low-level strength builds with massive weapons. Aside from that, it's really not that great. For example, this build would probably benefit a lot more from the Chlorinthy Ring and Power Within once the health is a bit higher. Anyway, if you have the free ring slot, there's no reason to not use it, but usually you can find something better. The first Gargoyle did a lot of jumping around, but cutting the tail off made it do the roar, which gave me plenty of time to land two more hits to kill it, and then the second one died to a couple more attacks. The main reason I decided to fight them now instead of after getting my weapon to plus 5 is so I can re-enter Sens from the bottom without doing the glitch every single time. Before that though, there's a very important ring I need to grab, so I get the Asylum West key and pretend to be an egg for a bit. The Stray Demon is super weak to bleed, and the Chaos Blade does a good chunk of damage anyway, so this fight is one of the easiest in the entire run. Probably the easiest Stray fight I've ever had. It's worth mentioning that critical attacks don't damage you, so parrying is very useful for this weapon, but most of the time it isn't really worth it. Obviously you should parry Black Knights or whatever, but if you don't already plan on parrying the enemy regardless of the weapon, the 20 health penalty really isn't that bad. Now that we have the doll and the rusted iron ring in hand, we can head back to Sen's fortress and start getting some more Demon Titanite. I took the long way back to Sen's through the Taurus Demon, since I was confident we'd already be able to one-shot it, and that turned out to be correct. I genuinely have no idea what was going through my mind going to the Capra Demon now. I suppose I just didn't want to fight any Titanite Demons right now, and I don't blame past me. They suck, but I feel like getting the higher level weapon as soon as possible should have been the priority. Anyway, the lower berg is pretty easy once you know how to get through it, letting the dogs burn themselves and all, and the Capra Demon goes surprisingly well, given the apparent lack of health and poise. The dogs and the demon dropped in the exact same spot, so I was able to kill the dogs and damage the demon quite a bit at the exact same time. I was sure, watching this run back to write this, that at this point I'd be going to kill the other demons, but past me had other ideas. The giant rat in the depths dies to a single plunging attack, giving us another humanity in the process in case I die later, and the little rat just before the boss arena happened to drop another one as well. Having 10 soft humanity increases your drop chances, if you didn't know. A full stamina bar of two-handed R1s does almost half the dragon's health, then another full bar can be used after running away, before landing two more easy hits while it's recovering to take it out super quickly. I'm sure a plus 5 weapon would have been enough to take it out much quicker, but here we are, I guess. I finally realized that getting the weapon to the maximum level was probably pretty important, and headed to the parish to take out some demons. The rusted iron ring lets you walk around in the tar under Sens without being slowed down if you didn't know, making killing the titan demons vastly easier. The one just below the entrance and the one next to the scythe are both very weak, dealing very little damage and taking even less to kill, so they're no issue, especially since they're fought separately. The other two, however, are much stronger and must be fought in tandem. Usually the second one will just stand in the back and shoot lightning while you kill the other one is mostly one-on-one, -on -one, but they both do a good chunk of damage, and they have much higher health than the other two. The rusted iron ring makes this fight vastly easier, like I said, but it's still pretty rough. Doing some quick math in my head, I realize I'll need two more demon titanite no matter what I do, so I decide not to kill the final demon in the fortress and head back to Anorlando instead. I know I could have traded a prism stone and a dung pie to Snugly for the easiest demon titanite, but killing the hardest titanite demon in the game is more interesting. The respawning titanite demon might actually be harder, but the tiny room you fight this one in leads me to think otherwise. I also could have killed the one in Sens and the one in the catacombs, but, well, I didn't want to explore the catacombs. 
The one here in Anne Orlando does quite a bit of damage and has a lot of health, which is part of what makes it hard, but the hardest part by far is the arena. The jump attack is nearly impossible to dodge, and the long sweep attack reaches across the whole room. The biggest piece of advice I can give for this fight specifically is telling you to exit the room to heal if you need to. The demon can't fit through the door, obviously, so it's completely safe to heal out there. I mentioned how difficult this particular demon was to Tori, and she mentioned it gave her trouble too, so I'm excited to see her video. I hope you are too, the juxtaposition between my run and hers will be fun, I think. Now that we have a max level weapon, it's time to go place the Lord Vessel. I want to do that through Koth, so it's to the forest first. I didn't quite have enough souls to buy the crest, but a soul item put me over 20k easily. I ended up using all my soul items to get a bit more health as well. I got to the bonfire behind the illusory wall in the forest, then went to the butterfly before taking on Sif. After a minute of flying around, it finally lands and dies in just a couple hits. Sif isn't a very different story, she jumps around a bit, but when she stops we can put out enough damage to end the fight very quickly. I even ended up killing her with a bleed, since she's weak to that. Since New Londo is already drained, we can head straight down to the Four Kings and see if our DPS is good enough. Luckily, it's more than enough to take out the Kings extremely quickly, and the health drain isn't nearly bad enough to dissuade the common strategy of just wailing on them and healing between Kings. The damage is good enough to take them out in three Kings. I could have done it if I had managed my stamina better, but unfortunately I missed it by a single hit. Koth takes a little taste, I place the Lord Vessel and make my way back to Anne Orlando to take care of some unfinished business. Gwendolyn is never hard, he's super easy to do hitless with his three whole attacks, and can be taken out in only two cycles. Once again, I'm not disappointed with this thing's damage output, though I can't say it's one of my favorite weapons just because I'm not in love with the moveset. The Painted World is easy to sprint through as usual, and the Chaos Blade does a good chunk of damage to the Undead Dragon. The butt might as well not even be there with the jump attack, and we can take on Priscilla. I got hit by an arrow on my way into the fight, which only happens very very rarely, those hollows usually don't even aggro. By the time I hit Priscilla enough to knock her out of visibility, half her health is gone, she staggers, then bleeds, then it's only two more hits to take her out. I also took out the Firekeeper without paying much attention because she dies in only a few hits and her damage to me isn't that high. I enter the Duke's archives now, taking out the boars extremely easily, but I realize that I should also take out the Hydra before going through the archives, just so I don't have to come back here later. I also take a pit stop at Sen's Fortress to grab the rare ring of sacrifice behind Ricard so I don't have to lose my humanity to the forced teeth death since a good chunk of my damage comes from it. The Hydra heads come off in a single swing, and the blade is long enough that the final head over the water can be easily reached without using any ranged attacks, which is a very refreshing change. The two golems die super quickly, apparently just like me to a group of crystal hollows. More than once. Seems like I got that rare ring of sacrifice for nothing. Well, at least I can use it in case I get cursed, which I didn't, even though I didn't do anything to avoid it. It's a good thing this game gives you so much humanity. I have more than enough to get back to 10 immediately, so we do plenty of damage to the Pasakas and Manserpents. We can even get an extra humanity from killing literally any hollow in the archives after leaving the prison, which you'll probably end up doing on accident. The crystal caves are short, as usual, and the Seath fight ends up being incredibly easy. Two clams got in this time, but Seath ended up killing one of them for me, and that one didn't even aggro on me for most of the fight. I couldn't have killed it without going out of my way anyway. I had completely forgotten that the clams can drop purging stones, but with 10 humanity the drop chance probably isn't too low, so I'm not surprised I got one. The catacombs are up next, and dropping through them makes them last about a minute from leaving Violink Shrine. Pinwheel dies in 4 extremely quick hits, and I sprint through the tomb without a light source, but this time it was on purpose. I had to quit out at the second bonfire because the Black Knight chased me all the way down, but other than that, there was nothing special about the run. I did my best to be careful in the needle fight, but a couple things don't exactly go perfectly to plan. I got hit by a ground stab, but luckily didn't get toxic. A skeleton also parried me, but it was right as Nito was using the AoE, so I ended up taking less damage overall, which is cool. The skeleton died from it though. Either way, Nito dies first try with only 3 Estus Flasks used, so it wasn't a terrible fight. As a side note, I haven't upgraded my Estus Flask much throughout this run, and there's not really a reason for that. I genuinely just didn't feel like I needed to, and I didn't end up leveling it for the rest of the run. That wasn't really intentional, but I guess it makes me seem a little cooler than I actually am. Alright, our final lord is the Bed of Chaos, but we still need to actually reach her. I haven't fought Ceaseless yet, which I almost always do right after Quelag. I decided to fight Ceaseless normally this time, which I don't think I've done for actual years. It's not a hard fight, but the lore kill is so much more convenient. His first couple attacks landed super far away from me, but I did still get hit by one because the hitboxes are much larger than I expected. His final attack also hit me because I rolled right into it, not knowing what to expect. Either way, he dies super fast because of our damage, and we can move on. The blade is long enough that we can attack the worm in front of the bonfire without much danger. 
The Demon Fire Sage is also super quick and easy, since it's weak to bleed, doesn't have a particularly challenging moveset, assuming it doesn't keep dropping away, and it doesn't have a super large health pool. The Centipede Demon isn't weak to bleed, and the moveset is far more diverse and challenging, but not so much so that it's a hard fight. I got super lucky and didn't have to dodge the arm throw once. I almost got knocked into the lava, but was able to cut the arm off before it happens, and it died to a single hit. From there, it started flailing, which gave me plenty of time to take it out. The Daughter of Chaos dies to a single backstab, and the bed is a very normal fight. I did it much faster than I normally do. I wasn't being super cautious about hiding behind trees, and running straight to the two sides completely recklessly ended up working really well. It used Firestorm on my way to the middle, but I was able to avoid it easily before jumping at the perfect time to get knocked directly onto the branch leading to the boss itself. That's all the base game bosses taken care of, now it's time for the DLC. I got super lucky with the Sanctuary Guardian fight. It dove onto me, which let me take off its tail immediately, then it used the wave twice, so I barely had to try in this fight, especially thanks to its low health. I didn't quite do the same amount of damage to Artorias, but it was still enough to take him out pretty quickly. It's easy to knock him out of buffing, but you also do less damage while he's buffing, but still take the same amount of damage. Granted, it's not that much damage, but it's still worth considering. He also started rolling away as if he was about to buff before doing a jump attack while I was healing. I was barely able to avoid it, but I've never seen that before. The Mimic holding the Crest Key dies super fast, though it probably would have died faster had I not started with a strong attack that completely drained my stamina. The R2 button is pretty much worthless with this weapon. Running past the Bloatheads before the Prisoner ended up being super easy, and running past the Prisoner itself was no harder. Quitting out as the Elevator is coming up, which I did to avoid the Prisoner anyway, makes the Bloathead on the Elevator despawn so you don't have to deal with it at all. And now we're ready to take on the last few bosses. Calamite doesn't take much damage from the sword, but it's not an absurdly low amount of damage. You can get plenty while it's standing up to breathe fire or while it's trying to grab you, and baiting the tail slam after the dive is another great opportunity if you get it. I had no idea Calamite could bleed before this run, but apparently it can. That said, I don't use bleed weapons very often, so I suppose that shouldn't be particularly surprising. Anyway, the fight is easy, we do a good chunk of damage even if each individual swing is pretty weak, and then we can move on to Manus. At this point, I'm finally confident enough to take on Manus without kindling the bonfire, especially after the Asylum only run. I do get hit by the sorcerer on my way down and need to use two Estus flasks to heal back to full since I'm still only at plus one, but I also have a lot of humanity, so I throw those on my hotbar and enter the fight. The speed of the weapon makes it pretty easy to find attack opportunities during the fight, but it also makes me far more aggressive. It's simply not safe to attack Manus from neutral thanks to the combo and the shotgun. I've never been able to avoid the combo from neutral despite the length of the tell. I am a lot better at discerning between the three magic attacks now though, and he only had time to use one combo through the whole fight. I was even able to dodge the shotgun without the pendant since I was actually a decent distance away thanks to the close range swipe he did just beforehand. He used the dark rain attack a lot during the fight, but it's not super hard to dodge as long as you don't run into one of the random pieces of debris in the arena. I probably didn't even need to use the humanity to heal, I only used one Estus flask during the fight itself. I used the other two to heal after the fight was already done. This Manus fight was pretty easy, however if you want to see a much much harder Manus fight, go ahead and go over to Tori's video. Uh, it's a Pretty crazy fight. I think it lasted about 6 minutes. I used the Hornet Ring for Gwyn, but he was able to take me out a couple times. Once because I'm apparently bad at the video game, and once because I looked away from my screen when I should have been parrying. I ended up doing the whole fight without any humanity, which dropped my damage a lot, and then picking the humanity up after the fight, which probably wasn't the best move, but I still beat him. Alright, once again, uh, Tori is uploading a similar video, uh, just a lot more challenge run focused on her channel on the same day that this is being uploaded, so if you're seeing this, you can go watch that right now if you haven't already. Uh, I highly recommend it. I haven't actually seen it, I'm really excited to see it, but I like her other videos, so <laughs> I recommend her channel in general, so I assume I'm gonna like the video and end up recommending it. Um, again, it's a lot more challenge focused, this was just examining the weapon that's like doing a challenge with the weapon, so if that's what you came here for, uh, definitely go check her out. I also want to thank Ryan Rickard, Emily, V, Manorock, and The Crack for supporting the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone that's here. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I love you all, and I don't know how to end this.